today we're going to be taking a look at a graphics card. It's not a particularly rare graphics card, but it's one that I've never had before, so I'm quite interested to take a look. It is from NVIDIA and it is the Reaver TNT2. The Reaver TNT2 was launched in 1999, towards the beginning of the year, I believe, and was part of the fifth generation of NVIDIA's graphics processors, labelled NV5. It was the follow-on chip from the original Reaver TNT. Reaver being an acronym for Real-Time Interactive Video and Animation Accelerator, apparently. The TNT being short for Twin Texel, Texel being the smallest unit of texture that is part of a texture map which goes to make up the amazing graphics on the games that we play. The main competition came from the likes of 3DFX with their Voodoo 2 and Voodoo 3 cards, the ATI Rage series, Matrox G400 and also the S3 Savage 4, some of which I've already benchmarked so we'll be taking a look at a couple of comparisons in a little while. So I said I hadn't had a TNT2 before, which isn't strictly true because there was a slow version and a crappy OEM version known as the TNT2 M64 or the TNT2 Vanta. These budget-oriented cards had the same GPU clock with slightly slower memory, but they had a 64-bit memory bus and were generally pretty rubbish, whereas the full TNT2 has 128 megabit and faster clocks all round. There are also three versions of the full TNT2. I've got the standard version here, but there is also a pro version, which is slightly higher clocked. And then there's an ultra version, which is a much faster and more expensive thing altogether. There were two versions of the card, a 16 megabyte version and a 32 megabyte version. And this one is the 32 megabyte one. Core is clocked at 125 megahertz. The memory is clocked at 150 megahertz. It's got a 128 bit memory bus rounded up with two pixel pipelines and two texture units. When the TNT2 arrived in 1999, it caused quite a stir as we can see from this magazine article here. And this is just a preview. So Maximum PC did an article where they were just sent one engineering sample which was running at 175 megahertz. So that would have been the Ultra, ultimately, when the names were dished out. And they also say there were two other versions, the 125 megahertz version, which is what we have here, which was the standard TNT2. And then there was one in the middle at 150 megahertz, which is the TNT2 Pro. But basically they just say here that the competition had better watch out because the TNT2 is coming and indeed, History shows that the TNT2 Ultra went on to be the car to have at the time. And when they landed on the shelves of your favourite computer store, the Viper 770 in its standard version as we have here would have cost you $179. And the 770 Ultra would have cost you a bit more at $239. The card's an AGP times four card, though there are jumpers on the board that allow you to set it to be a AGP times two card. So I guess that would be for older motherboards. But we're going to be running it on a universal AGP slot. We're going to be testing it out on this machine here that I built specially for this purpose because of its universal AGP port. The motherboard is a Matsonic MS9107C. The processor is a Pentium 4 running at 2.66 GHz based on the Northwood core. The machine has Windows 98 second edition installed that has been patched to allow you to go beyond the 512 megabyte memory barrier. And this machine has one gigabyte in of DDR memory running at 333 MHz. Okay, now for a little bit of benchmarking. So I'm just going to do this in the same way that I've done so far for the other cards that I've done. I do plan on expanding this a little bit at some point with some more game benchmarks and stuff like that. But at the minute, it's just 3D Mark 99, 3D Mark 2000, and Unreal Tournament. And running in 16-bit and 32-bit at 640 by 480, 800 by 600, 1024 by 768, and 1280 by 1024. There are some other cards to compare this one with and two of them just happen to be from the same generation which is quite cool so we're going to compare it against the Voodoo 3 3000 
we're going to compare it against the ATI Rage 128 Pro. And the other card that I'd benchmarked so far was the GeForce 256, the SDR version. So again, quite interesting just to see how much of a jump there was between the TNT2 and the GeForce 256 being the card that came after it. So 3D Mark 99, this is where we were before benching the TNT2. So GeForce 256 ahead, as you'd expect. The Rage 128 Pro was a little bit behind the Voodoo 3 3000 at 16-bit. Obviously, there's no 32-bit for the Voodoo, and we'll see how the Rage 128's 32-bit compares with the TNT2 in just a second. Okay, and now the TNT2 is benched in 3D Mark 99. And it comes up pretty much where you'd expect it to. It does very well at 640x480 at 16-bit. It beats the Voodoo 3 considerably at the lower resolutions, but then kind of falls into being just ahead of it at higher resolutions in 16-bit and beats the 128 quite comfortably. So in 32-bit, it obviously doesn't compare with the Voodoo because it hasn't got any, and it compares faster at lower resolutions than the 128 Pro and pretty similar on the others so yeah it's kind of where you'd expect it to be a little bit faster than the Rage 128 Pro a little bit faster than the Voodoo and obviously behind the GeForce 256. But the gaming benchmarks in 3D Mark 99 you were getting some pretty good scores at the lower resolutions at 16 bits so you were pretty much around 100 FPS at 640 by 480 in the 60s and 70s at 800 by 600 in the mid 50s at 1024 by 768 and in still playable mid 30s at 1280 by 1024 once you got to 32 bit you were doing well at lower resolutions again in the sort of 70s and 80s at 640 by 480 then you were getting mid 40s at 800 by 600 and mid 30s at 1024 by 768 but then you were dropping down to unplayable levels only at the highest resolution at 1280 by 1024 Moving on to 3D Mark 2000, looking at the state of the cards before the TNT2 was benchmarked, you've got a similar kind of picture, only this time around at 16-bit, the Rage 128 is probably a little bit ahead of the Voodoo 3. Certainly at lower resolutions, I think the Voodoo 3 is a little bit faster at higher resolutions. And yeah, the GeForce 256 is well ahead, as you'd expect. So once the TNT2 is added into the mix, it's kind of, as you'd expect, again, it looks very similar to 3D Mark 99. It significantly beats the Voodoo and the Rage 128 Pro at 16-bit and 32-bit, possibly a bit more competitive with the Rage 128 Pro, but at lower resolutions seems to be faster, again, considerably slower than the 256, as you'd expect. The game's benchmarks in 3D Mark 2000 are a little bit different. There are two games, a helicopter game, which is very demanding, and an adventure game, which isn't so demanding. And at 16-bit, the card sort of holds its own with the helicopter game, which is the more demanding of the two. This is all at high detail, and it's only at 1024 by 768 where the frame rates drop well below 30. Uh, the adventure game sort of hangs on playable frame rates up until you get to 1280 by 1024, and then... By that time, it's down to about 25 frames a second, so they're probably still borderline. At 32 bit, things drop off a bit faster, so you're only getting 32 frames a second in the helicopter game straight away, but you're getting 60 or so in the adventure game. But as soon as you go up to 800 by 600, the helicopter game is down to like 15 frames a second. But the adventure game is still playable probably up until 1024 by 768 and then it drops down to 15 frames a second as well at 1280 by 1024. So I guess in more demanding games, a couple of years after the card came out, you're probably looking at dropping your detail levels. Looking at Unreal Tournament, with the cards before the TNT2 is added into the mix, the Rage 128 Pro and the Voodoo 3 are pretty evenly matched here at 16 bits, and obviously the 256 is ahead of both of them. And here comes the TNT2, and it's quite interesting. At lower resolutions, it's almost neck and neck with the GeForce, so 
Low resolutions, really fast, way over 100 or around 100, even at 32 bit. But at the higher resolutions, it's still got sort of borderline playable frame rates at 1280 by 1024, so I guess that's 26, 27. But certainly at 1024 by 768, it's doing pretty well. It's well in the high 40s, and it's beating both the Voodoo 3 and the Rage 128 Pro, and sits nicely in between. That and the GeForce. It would certainly be interesting to see where the, the TNT2 Pro and the TNT2 Ultra fit into this. So that pretty much wraps it up. It's a cool card to have in my collection and I really am kind of wanting to get hold of the others in the series, the Pro and the Ultra. I've already got the crappy M64 and Vanta so it'd be nice to have the full set and see how they all compare with each other and also to compare the Ultra just to see how fast it was and also how close it was to the 256 but that's pretty much it from now we'll play out playing a little bit of Unreal Tournament and I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one thank you very much for watching